Hey, good day, everyone. Sean Glenn here, Q Cannabis. We're doing a series of partner spotlight interviews that feature software and platforms we believe to be crucial to any retail cannabis operation or brand. As we head into an economic recession and post COVID-19 realities of social distancing, et cetera, these platforms are really important for these types of businesses to not only survive right now, but also to thrive into the future. So a little bit about Q Cannabis. We are an online marketplace and resource for any flower touching type of business to find the software and IT infrastructure and business services that they may need to run their operations. So we typically spend quite a bit of time vetting our partners before we even list them on the marketplace. And you know, there's a lot of things that go into that. So it's not an advertising platform. Uh, you know, we, we really want to have this marketplace and platform and our expertise at the disposal of the small business cannabis retail operations, cultivators, <clears throat> large business operations, vertically integrated, all that stuff, the whole spectrum. So as a resource. And um, so you know, we're, we're looking at platforms that are really enabling dispensaries to have better engagement with their customers while remaining safe. And to also, you know, be able to compete in this, in this time right now. And, and so that's why we've got Zach Barger, Director of Channel Partnerships today from BirdEye. So welcome, Zach, and thanks a ton for taking some time to join us today. Appreciate that. No, absolutely do appreciate that. Um, it's, it's good to be with you guys. Yeah, and so, you know, BirdEye is a comprehensive customer experience platform. You know, there's a ton of features that you guys have, and I think we'll probably dive into that a little bit. Yeah. But, you know, a little bit of context, again, why we love this platform is that, I think first and foremost, it enables dispensaries and brands to really engage with their customers and prospects via their websites and other digital communication platforms. And that enables everyone to stay safe and to really drive additional new users and you know the can of curious crowd to find you, which is ultra important in, in today's data driven and you know the consumers have so much more power at their fingertips to find like you know dispensaries or like brands, but you know I start digging into reviews, and that's that's really where some of these decisions are are getting made is is at that level. So that's that's first and foremost one of the major reasons why we really like you guys. Yeah. You know, and secondly, you guys rank really highly in all facets of our vetting process, from affordability to user experience, user interface, you know, customer service, and even to your financial stability. So. Yeah. Really sure. hard mark there, and you know that's the reason why we wanted to spotlight you guys today. Well, appreciate yeah. it. You said that really well. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, man. Um, why don't you give us a little bit of background about Bird Eye and what you do there, and you know some of the things that you guys are are doing in the in the cannabis space? <clears throat> right. So, yeah. So my name is Zach Barger. Of course, um, I, I do work in in channel here, and we do a lot of uh, we put the product in in odd places. I guess you could say the we wouldn't say fringe areas, but more of the kind of more progressive places. Um, and typically we'll focus on partnerships with either strategic alliances where we're partnering with, with a company for just maybe go co-sell together on a certain angle. Um, other times we just, we do resellers, Y label, the whole thing um, on, on that um, side of the business and, and really just kind of help, help people really grow. Um, kind of get our philosophy inside of them uh, as far as CX and reputation management's approach to CX um, and how the, the really educating the, the reputation management uh, industry as a whole on how this is a gateway to brand experience, employee experience, um, just customer service or, or customer, customer experience in general um, and just things along those lines. So. Yeah, excellent. And you guys, uh, you have a lot of experience in many other industries as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we focus on, we started out as a medical, uh, we're fully HIPAA compliant. So our, our data is as sensitive as, um, you know, any HIPAA compliant software out there where we don't share data or anything along uh, those lines. It's, a, it's an encrypted system end to end. So we started out in the medical space and then it progressed over into more things like home services to, um, I mean, dentist, doctors, obviously, uh, automotive. Uh, yeah. We, we pretty much stretch across all verticals. So, yeah. yeah. And I think that's kind of an, it's an important 
uh, point to make, I believe, because there are a lot of startups in the cannabis industry that are, you know, really trying to get their foothold in cannabis specifically as a start, whereas you guys have a pretty deep foundation already built in many of these other industries that are very, uh, they, they apply really well in the cannabis. So I think that's an important mm -hmm. point. Um, you guys have a, some deep experience there that translates really well into, into the, especially the retail side and the, and the brand side of things in the cannabis space. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Even the relationship with Google that we have, like, I think there's one of two, we're one of two people that have the direct um, open API relationship with them. Um, which is a really, really deep, we actually uh, seep into their uh, map functionality and things, our star ratings and things. So, uh, so we have a really deep um, partnership with them, Facebook and so on. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, that kind of rolls into my first or next question here is, you know, what role does reputation management play in the overall marketing strategy of a retail dispensary? And also maybe talk a little bit about some of those hooks into Google and search engine optimization and that sort of stuff. If you would. Sure. Sure. So it's the inception of any customer journey is the inception of your customer, right? Like it's cradle to grave, um, really figuring out where did you find being found first and each company, each brand business, brick and mortar location, they all go about these things differently. So about being found can be from paid ads. It could be billboards. It could be blog content. It could be guerrilla marketing. It could be SEO, right? It all just depends. And I understand that there's uh, restrictions sometimes on ads in, in this kind of space and industry. So it really puts a focus back onto the things that you can do. And one of those things is search engine optimization um, and being found um, for the things that you do. And you have to think about, you have to get into the head of your searcher, of your new customers. Like, how are they searching? Are they searching based off a zip code? Are they searching based off a, off a um, just a overall, like a city? Or is it more of a best, like a searchable action term, like best cannabis dispensary near me or best delivery service near whatever, um, best plumber near me? Those are now terms that the, the choice that Google is gonna make is predicated off of reviews. Um, and as far as like overall search, it's a huge piece of, of search nowadays. So, um, that's really number one is being found, um, using things like listings, um, you know, or however you go about doing that, but really where bird eye comes into play is that being, being chosen. Um, it's that conversion. It's, it's no matter of how somebody found you, it can even be a friend's recommendation, right? 83% of consumers trust online reviews over a friend or family's like referral. So yeah. when, you, when you think about that, it's a very powerful product where even if you're spending $1,500 a month in ads, like an average small business or something, being able to reduce um, that, that bounce rate and getting people to convert that first time because you do have relevant reviews and they are pretty much really good and they're not uh, skewed or fake or something. Those are the really, really important things to capture new customers. And like you were saying too, that can of curious crowd when it comes to this industry, I cannot tell you how important that is. That is a lifeblood of, of repeat business because new business becomes old business, right? But how are you going to capture the consumer that's never done this for the first time and potentially might have a stigma about it or might just never have done this before. There's a certain level of anxiety. So, how are you going to ease that? And that's where reviews really come into play. Yeah. And I think in the post COVID-19 world, you're going to have a lot more people just doing some research before they decide to take the trip into a dispensary sure. or, um, you know, even with the proliferation of online ordering, curbside delivery and uh -huh. um, at home delivery, all that stuff really starts with a search, right? And, sure. and what you're doing. You know, the other thing I wanted to point out here too is, you know, I think a lot of the audience here is going to be familiar with you know, Weed Maps or Weefly, some of those other more um, specialized search engine type functionality within the cannabis space. How are you guys integrated with them? Yeah, so we actually have a, they're a, they're a publisher or an API partner for us. So we can generate, um, when we send out a review invite via SMS, um, you know, in an ideal world, say, Sean, I owned your, uh, I own the dispensary and you came 
as a, con as a consumer, um, when you left, you would receive a SMS that would give you an option to leave a review on Google, Facebook, or Leafly. So we're gonna be able to push reviews to those platforms and then also allow you to respond to them as well inside the, the dashboard and UI, so. Yeah, that's super powerful stuff. Um, you know, and I think a lot of operations are having to look at, you know, some of their overhead costs and how much time do they now have to manage those reviews in real time and across multiple review sites. It's that whole reputation management bucket becomes a, a pretty heavy lift at this point, if, especially if you're, you know, trying to run a little more efficiently, a little more lean, and you don't have as many people on staff anymore to, to manage that stuff. So this mm -hmm. type of tool is really powerful. And that, and again, you know, from our perspective at Q, this, these are the types of partners and platforms and, and tools that we want to highlight for, for our potential audience out there and for potential clients. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And scalability wise too, you know, there's not, it's, you can really do it. Um, you can do it wrong. You know, if you don't have the right scalable kind of solution and, and, and kind of built for volume, um, you're going to create some headaches and stuff for yourself. So, you know, we pride ourselves on those kind of things. Yeah. And really, you know, it takes one bad review to really put you behind a long ways and you could have literally thousands of really good ones. And it's, it's yep. the bad stuff that people kind of focus on. And if as a business, you're not able to respond to those quickly and manage those things efficiently and, and effectively, you're going to be in big trouble quick. Yeah. 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 It's, it's silent majority is basically what we're trying to give a voice to 95% of the people are happy with you, but only the select amount of people leave a bad review or a good review. You either have to really, really impress me or really piss me off. And, and you know, what we try to do is give everybody opportunity with an ease of use style of platform where even if you get negative reviews, we're going to be able to somewhat dilute them. Um, just based on there's a bunch of customers out there that are happy with their experience with you and they should be, you know, they should have a voice as well and make it easy to do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so how have some of your cannabis dispensary clients leverage the BirdEye platform to, to boost their sales? And, you know, we don't have to get into any numbers or anything, but are, do you have any anecdotes that you could maybe share with, with us today? Yeah, so like uh, the first thing I always start with is the check-in feature for us. It's nothing crazy, but in this specific niche, it can be really valuable um, basically what you do is you would load the bird eye, you, you load it onto an iPad or some type of system in the waiting room or when somebody comes to check in, you know, rather than just uh, go ahead and wait in the, you, you want to be able to collect that customer information. So really being able to capture all of your customer data, everybody who comes in there, being able to get a name, email, or phone number, number one. And, even aside from bird eye and sending reviews out, just that's a really, really powerful thing to, to um, have is, is all of your, your client or, or patient data, um, consumer data there. So that's number one is that check-in feature. Um, really reducing the, the cost of, of ads. Like when you think about any, I don't care if it's direct mail, if you're sending out coupons, um, that costs money. If you're going to be doing paid ads, that costs money. Radio spots, that costs money. But if I could increase somebody's conversion rate where say you had a thousand people uh, click on an ad and then, you know, 10% uh, converted, but with a reputation management solution or with really good reviews, you know, now people are going to choose out a 15 or 20% clip, you know, we essentially just paid for ourselves. And that's really what we look for is to really speed up that transaction and make it more of a conversion on the spot if possible. Um, and then especially is our interactions tool. So we have a chat bot, which people are somewhat familiar with as far as the aesthetics and what people can see with their eyes, but it's really a three headed, uh, it's a chat bot, live chat, um, and a web chat bot. So the difference in those three is basically there's some automation for questions that could be answered easily. Like, are you open right now? The computer's going to go ahead and like, answer those for you. So it's got some automation, save some time there. Um, it's got a, a live chat feature where obviously you can chat with a human being. Um, and then it's got uh, chat bot capabilities where you can now push it with inside a, an organization, right? Uh, yeah. if you want to ask a specific question about a strain or if somebody has a certain whatever. 
Um, now those messages can be funneled with inside the organization instead of, you know, one person that might not have all those answers. Um, and then you have receptionists, so you can set appointments, which would be huge for the style of, of, of business, right? So um, there's something like 33% of people will go somewhere else if they reach out to a business and try to communicate with them and then don't get a prompt response. So if you think about that, with all your new business and people that wanted to ask you a specific question or on their way um, or are at work and can't talk on the phone and want to ask you a certain question. You know, if you don't respond the, the correct way or 30% you know, of your, your new business is just going somewhere else. So, but yeah, those are, those are the main things. Yeah. And that goes back to also the point I was talking about where you know, it really seems like dispensaries, and brands are trying to operate more efficiently right now. And if you can give them a tool that allows them to do more with less in terms of strict headcount, that's a, that's a really powerful thing right now. So it is, it is, it's just a diet and exercise for your business. It's one of those things where you pay a lot of money and you work really hard to get every single customer and you should get something um, tangible out of that. And one of the things you can get is, is, is a review, you know, it's going to help you drive more business. So, it's kind of like you're going to fossilize a digital transaction. So even at its minimum, like even at the minimum, at least you're doing that for your business, you know, the, the health of your, the digital component of your business. So it's just a responsibility thing. Yep. Totally agree. So we've already talked about a few of the features on the platform. Um, are there any more you want to highlight? You know, as far as like overall features, there's, there's really something that I want to open everybody's eyes here, um, especially in the cannabis world, because it's something that they're going to, everybody's going to be embarking on. Um, I deal with a lot of upmarket uh, brand X um, companies that all they do is focus on market research when it comes to leveraging brands. And you learn a lot there. And Berta is actually taking a really special approach to where, yes, we can get you reviews for your brick and mortar location. But what about that next generation of data? and how you can tangibly or, or make changes to your business based off what the data tells you. And really it's that solicited kind of unsolicited data mix. So I think for the cannabis industry as a whole, being able to understand your review core or understand review core where you get a review, but what do you do with that data? How are you going to analyze that? Right. And then how are you going to act on it? Um, are you listening to social media channels and seeing if what you think of your brand, your perception is the actual reality? What, what are people actually saying? Are you capturing all the things that people are saying? So really that's step number one. And then being able to measure that against more of like a cert, like being able to have simple surveys that go out, um, be able to catch that kind of feedback. And that's where you're going to get that solicited and unsolicited um, product mix and anybody who's in the branding world is going to understand exactly what I'm talking about. But mm -hmm. here at BirdEye, of course, we can go up market and we can do all that. Brand, we can have those branding conversations when it comes to those two um, parts of data. But really, we're being able to take that and have a small business be able to utilize it as well. So it can be a really powerful up and down market tool. And that's something I really want the cannabis industry to kind of start getting their head around because I'm not going to, I don't want to sound like a not going to be like a profit or something, but these are people that are already general motors, right? Back sure. to the Robins, like everybody's already doing this. So yeah. I'll, I mean, there's a lot of experience and best practices at work there, right? Yeah. That, that can be applied. And that's the beauty of software as a service is those tools were only available to those really large enterprises at one point, but you know, now we can put those in the hands of any type of business, any size of business. And, it's really so valuable, you know, that data is so valuable. It's so rich, you know, it's just the, it's the most special kind of data out there right now. So um, it's really, um, it's in high demand, even up market. So. Excellent. Uh, any roadmap items you can discuss with us? You know, a little sensitive there. We are a little, we are pretty, we're, we're very progressive as a company. I mean, we're stretching tools um, in places that I wish I could say some cer uh, certain things. <laughs> there's some really exciting stuff out there. But, you know, we're going to be able to add a little bit. Of, we're going to stretch our insight tool a little bit. I think I can say that. And we're also going to stretch our interactions tool a little bit. So we're going to continue to extend those two. 
um, really exciting things on the horizon. But yeah, unfortunately, it's just one of those like, it's just one of those CX secrets right now. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's no shame in saying, hey, of we course. can't disclose that right now. You know, I'm going to ask the question, you don't have to answer it. <laughs> but the good news is we'll keep our eyes peeled and, um, you know, when that stuff's generally available, we'll be yeah. able to do it. <clears throat> Yeah. You know, we, I touched on this a little bit myself, but I wanted to get your perspective. You know, how has COVID-19 changed or accelerated the importance of reputation management? Oh, man. It's, uh, we've been, I'm not going to lie, my own personal opinion, I thought we were going to take a much bigger hit than we actually did. Um, we, I mean, I, nobody wants to be, nobody wants to be a winner, you know, when everybody seems to be losing and stuff. It's, it's definitely not that. But I didn't even understand how in such a high demand we were um, when it came to this because there's a huge percentage of, of market share out there now that's disconnected from where it used to trade. And I don't care what industry it is. I don't care if it's ice cream, cannabis, yeah. oil and gas. I don't care. There's going to be a certain percentage of market share that's just up for grabs now. Mm -hmm. It's just disconnected. So there's a lot of uh, market research companies that are really, really busy and stuff right now. So, and of course that funnels down to a solution like us, which is, which is, uh, you know, so yeah, we got really busy. Um, you got to think about the businesses, local businesses, your, com your competitors, who's staying open, who closed down, where are those customers going? You know, how much market share is out there to grab? And then if you're going to grab market share, how do you do it with a great online reputation, right? And a really, cool um you know marketing like go to market and new schema and branding and fresh messaging and so you know we're we're really busy right now um it's just been one of those things but but yeah yeah that's great insight and you know it goes back to this isn't just a cannabis type of change and shift this is across all industries mm -hmm. and there's a lot of opportunity out there as well. So and yeah. have the right tools and the right expertise and there's uh, you know, a chance to, to really take advantage of that right now. And also, you know, stay safe at the same time, right? And, sure. and have public health concerns first and foremost. And that's one thing I like about the cannabis space is it came from a public health space first, right? As, as a medical um, business and yeah. Um, you know, that I think that that's translated really well into the retail side of things, you know, respecting client privacy, um, and yeah. just understanding the importance of public health and safety. So, you know, that's, that's one thing I've always admired about the cannabis industry. <clears throat> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's not an easy thing to do, you know, um, you, you've got to jump through some hoops. So it makes, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. So what's, what's one thing you'd like to recommend to dispensary operators and brands that would have the biggest impact on, on their brands out there in the public space? Yeah, so I would really, especially on the brick and mortar locations, I would be looking at investing in some uh, form of, of a, a chat, right? Something somewhere and something that could be a website like Lead Converter. More and more people are gonna want to text. Um, it's just the way we're we're just evolving um, as consumers. So definitely have something like that in place and have some strategy um, that's gonna allow you guys to convert leads because there's money that's just you just didn't take advantage of. Um, I didn't realize it until we launched the product that we did on how important it is, and then I go back to my own consumer behavior as a as a person, like just personally, and I'm blown away with how many. You know, how many times I left a message rather than call, right? So that's step one for a, uh, for a brick and mortar location. And then, you know, also be able to start listening. This goes to the brands as well. Start listening to the channel, like what, what people are saying about you. Um, you know, it's really easy to have a perception in your head that, that your brand is what it is, but do you have data behind it to support it? And especially for the brand, um, you know, I, I touched on it a little bit earlier, the brand and um, uh, kind of the uh, more higher level kind of companies that are focused on brands, start looking at your unsolicited channels, you know, start, get a social listening tool. Um, it's something we touch on, um, but there's a lot of social listening tools and stuff out there. Some of them are really, really deep. 
Um, and then you have, uh, you know, your, your, the other 50% of the unsolicited, which is review data. So being able to get those two lines to listen to those two channels and come up with some understanding or benchmark there is huge. And then roll out some type of survey tool. You know, if, if you guys can do something along those lines, um, no matter what company you go with, you're going to really elevate um, your services and, and just your reputation as a company, because that's the responsibility. That's the responsible way of, of going about um, brand X right now. So. Got it. Well, Hey Zach, that's all I have for us. Um, was there anything else you wanted to share with, with, uh, with, with us here at Q or the audience? You know, um, one thing I w would like to close on is we're one of, I can't speak intelligently to this, but I know our main, main competitor, and I'm not going to throw them under the bus. They have good technology and things as well, but I just don't know if they actually work with cannabis um, clients yet. So yeah. that's um, an important point because it is a, con you know, that's, it's a concern on, on all levels of operating here in, in this space. That's right. And we are uh, very cannabis friendly. Like we have um, a, a ton of uh, just small dispensaries um, on as clients. We have larger clients as well that are coming to us, um, some that run through my channel um, and so on. So we're very cannabis CBD friendly, um, anything in that space. So um, just wanted to kind of just close on that because not all solutions, um, you know, are or have the same approach we do. Yeah, that's a great point. Thanks for pulling that up to the front. So, yeah, I mean, we've talked about a lot of stuff here. I think, you know, if anyone else is, if anyone out there is interested, I'd highly recommend getting a demo set up. We can do that through, through us here. You can just go to qcannabis.com. That's C-U-E cannabis.com. Talk to our chatbot that we've got set up. We can get a demo set up through Zach's organization, or you can, you know, go check out birdeye.com directly. And uh, I would highly recommend if you're interested in anything we've talked about today and wanting to um, shore up some of the things in this uh, reputation management area of your operations. So, yeah, let's get it done sooner than later and we can, we can help you with that. Yeah. So thanks again, Zach. Really appreciate your time. It was a pleasure speaking with you today and we'll be talking to you soon. Sounds good. Appreciate everybody on the call today. Take care. All right.